Music is really everywhere. Like, you might not expect it to be music, but like, the birds even make like a music and like just everywhere there's music. And I remember being in school, hearing the chorus sing when the leaves are red and yellow in the fall. And I don't know what song that is, but it stuck with me my whole life. And seeing these school kids sing this, I just thought, what a cool thing. So many renowned musicians that started at an early age. When I was about four or five, getting the pots and pans out of the kitchen uh, and beating the heck out of them. And, uh, my, my mother eventually prevented me from doing that. She put locks on the cabinet so I wouldn't do that anymore. All children love music. I mean, I really haven't met very many children at all who don't really enjoy going to music class. There's a picture of me when I was a young kid. It also includes my younger sister and my brother. We were the Costello kids, tracing all over the Northwest at all the amateur programs. It was an early involvement in music. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. We've seen since 1990 uh, real decline in resources for schools and uh, just consistent budget cutting, basically. In Portland, we've had budget cuts so severe that a lot of our schools don't even have a music program at all. So it's very possible that a child could go through school in Portland and never be exposed to any musical instruments or any education for music literacy. And it's never a decision or a choice a principal wants to make. It's, and it's never a choice schools want to make or communities want to make. They don't want to have to make those kinds of decisions um, because we appreciate and acknowledge that all of those elements are important for kids um, to have a well-rounded education. I've noticed uh, more and more kids unable to identify instruments, the way the instruments look, the way the instruments sound, being able to you know, discern the difference between a violin and a cello and those kinds of things because they just aren't exposed to it like I was. State money has been cut back to the schools for support and there's not enough support from uh, the general public to, to bring those uh, music programs into the forefront. It takes a, a lot of, of, uh, of time to be a good teacher and, uh, and because of that uh, teachers don't always have time uh, to teach really important uh, uh, basic concepts of musicianship. D, D, huh? D. Why D? Z, key of Z. He wants it in the key of Z. It really is important to get kids engaged in music at a young age, like a really young age, like the sooner the better. And all the research suggests over and over again that music literacy does wonders for student achievement. <laughs> have suffered uh, in a lot of different areas of education, but it's those fringe things that, that do get cut when that happens. It really is not a, a fringe study. It's, it's really a part of our core curriculum. And so I think as a, you have to almost be an activist to remind everybody that music is a part of the core curriculum. And even if the kids don't want to become professional musicians, it's just something that they can have as they progress through life that they can pass down to their kids or just the, you know, the pl everyday pleasure of coming home from whatever gig you got or work you got just to be sit down and play the piano. I think we're at a moment in time where we have to get scrappy. We have to figure out how to move forward because it's unacceptable to think that our children can go through their traditional education system without exposure to music literacy. It seems like a shame. It just seems like how could it possibly be that there's no money available for music in, in schools. The district, for the most part, don't have school programs, they don't have music programs anymore. So the only, pro the only music is the music of the Grand Staff program. And that's why we want this program, the Grand Staff, 
to come into these schools so that every child will have an opportunity to at least have some exposure to music and instruments. It's not really fair uh, not to have some kind of music literacy uh, and this, this program gives that to the kids. Really listen and be attentive today, okay? The grand staff is different um, from the music that we have, like our music teacher, because it gives you different musicians coming in every week and teaching you about different instruments. The drums, and we got to try the guitar and the, lots of other instruments. The program was designed to expose music to the children and to introduce a different instrument of the orchestra every week, live. And my thought was, as long as we're going to do that, we might as well try to get the best. So we've been able to not only have interest from the uh, best musicians in Portland, but I have a bunch of them that are on standby that want to be involved in the program. The idea is having this music appreciation course that would later lead to a class where the children could have a one-on-one -on -one music mentorship program. Where we then would give them free lessons where they wouldn't ordinarily be able to pursue their interest in that instrument. Eventually we'll all get there, but a good teacher will get you there a lot quicker because he has the experience, he knows really what it takes to do the things that you're trying to do. The one-on-one -on -one lessons were a huge help, you know. They definitely took it a much stronger direction for me and just having that focused attention. Don't be afraid. When Del came to talk to me about it, I just, I never hesitated. I thought this is going to be a fabulous opportunity for our school to pilot this kind of program. And, the students are involved, are very engaged, very engaged, and mesmerized would be a good word to use with the musicians who've come here and performed. Oh, yeah. and the pure joy <coughs> of music and childhood, I think, is something that every child should have that opportunity. The, the musicians let the kids play and feel it and, you know, hold it and they can kind of mess around with it a little bit themselves. I think that's when the real <coughs> spark happens. What I like about it is that we get to hear different people come in every week and we get to hear what they play and how they play. It's cool to hear other people who like to play instruments like as much as I do. First time I saw a live concert other than a symphony show was 1972 with Leon Russell at the Portland Coliseum and it changed my life. I mean, it actually changed my life. That band was so powerful on stage and the musicianship was so amazing. No matter how bad it was during that day, no matter how much trouble I was having, you know, with other kids or s subjects that were difficult, I knew that there was the band class at the end of the day. And that was what got me through the day. And, you know, I really consider that it, it saved my life. Truly, it's, it's taken off at Capitol Hill and I'm sure it can be duplicated at other schools as long as the principal leadership and the parent community is behind it. I spent all my life in, in the music business and I wanted to, my real interest was to give children the same kind of exposure to music that I had. And could be easily replicated and I think especially in a city like Portland, Oregon that has this incredibly unique huge group of professional musicians who who band together and support one another and particularly have a passion for reaching out to young people. We can expand the program uh, as, far as, as far as possible and expose the music to as many children, as many K-5 kids as we can. It doesn't take a lot of money to, to make a, a music education program. But it really just takes one person that can mobilize the cats, you know, the musicians and then match those with the kids and then you know everything takes off from there. We are the grand staff, each of us as parents, as individuals in the community, 
it's a play on words that we are those people that are going to create this music education for these children. The community can rally together uh, and help programs at individual schools, but it's not going to happen without the, the support of the general public out there. What we're doing now is just looking for the funding. And if there are people that want to be involved with it, this is a way that we can have music education in public schools starting this year. You know, it was the, the one thing that I really loved about going to school. It's um, really important to get music in your life, because if you don't have any music, then you'll just be like sitting playing video games your whole life, and you won't really like get to hear like live music and how good it sounds. You know, Portland is, um, is a city that works when we come together and create stories like this, and when we come together as a community and, um, and, and, and provide such a, a great resource for our children.